Hello, everyone, and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We are approaching branding time for springborn calves. We're here at the Range Cow Research Center with Dave Lallman, our Extension Beef Cattle Specialist. And Dave, you're starting to get some questions about the use of implants. What are you hearing? Well, it's time of the year for people to consider that because it would be something that you would try to accomplish during that branding process. And so the question is, you know, <clears throat> should, should they consider doing that? What's the cost effectiveness of it? Uh, and, you know, does that influence the price of the calves later on? Because it will influence their weight. And some of the things that are influencing this decision is public perception and what the current trends are. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, apparently that's, that's exactly right because uh, you can look at some really nice data sets and we have several surveys that suggest that right now about 28% of cow-calf producers are implanting their steer calves at branding time. That's gone way down in the last 20 years or so. In fact, the Superior Livestock Video Auction data shows that in the last 20 years that's gone from uh, nearly oh, 65 to 70 percent all the way down to about 30 percent 28 to 30 so uh, for some reason and those are those are larger producers those are folks with generally speaking at least 200 cows uh, so we think probably that's a lot of that is perception or fear of an of a negative influence when they when it comes time to market those cattle so then how does how do the facts in terms of the sales what do they indicate what's the what's the heart of all of that well C superior has done a fantastic job studying that and of course um, in their data set they they have millions of millions of cattle and so they study the lots that are implanted and compare that to lots that are not implanted of similar quality uh, gender breed type of cattle and what they found bottom line is over the years with all those you know millions of head of data is that there's no influence on price implanting does not influence price you would you think that it might and maybe that is some of the the perception or or reasons why people have, have dropped off right more than likely and what little information we have about people's reasoning for declining to you know implement that technology would that's exactly what it suggests is that it's primarily either either they have a core value against uh, using that technology to sort of replace the hormones that that were taken away when the calf was castrated in the first place or or it's a, a market influence uh, fear or mis misconception. What does the research tell you about the sale price for calves that have been implanted? Well, it says that there is just no difference compared to calves that have not been. Um, so it's, it's really interesting, about five to seven percent of the beef that's marketed uh, in this country are actually in a certified non-hormone treated uh, or all natural program. Okay, about five to seven percent. But s about 70 percent of our cow-calf producers are choosing not to implant. That's all. That's a lot more than we than we need. And and the truth of the matter is is that the, the data shows that there's no downstream negative impacts of the calf hood implant. So a stalker person or feed yard person buys your calves that have been implanted at branding time. There's no negative influence on weight gain, no negative influence on feed efficiency, apparently no negative influence on carcass quality. So I think the important takeaway is that the uh, perceptions about a potential negative impact because someone used implant technology is does not does not appear to be the case it, there is no influence on market price according to that large data sets and, and several other surveys relative to the impact on price okay dave Lawman, thanks a lot and for a link to more information on the research that dave just talked about go to sunup.okstate.edu